Great. Okay, as I said, my name is Milan Gabor. I come from Slovenia. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the ELK visualization, especially about the Wi-Fi. So you're going to see some pretty interesting stuff. Um, I could choose another uh, title of my presentation. Uh, I actually did this so you can get from a packet to the real person. So you only catch one packet on a Wi-Fi and you can identify the persons from it. Or uh, building a cheap Wi-Fi IDS with uh, Elasticsearch, Kibana and Logstash. So actually, who am I? Um, I think I qualified for, uh, for this conference. Uh, why? Because I got up today at 5 a.m. I drove to Vienna for two and a half hours. Then I was flying for one hour and a half, and then I was driving by bus. Then I was walking from uh, Darmstadt Hauptbahnhof to my hotel and to here. So I think I did qualify for, for, for this. I'm still alive. I'm still standing. So um, besides uh, hacking, I also do drones. So this is one of my pictures from last Sunday. Uh, I build them, I fly them, I crash them. So I even fly and sniff Wi-Fi for some customers that they demand, especially if they have big holes. You know, you cannot walk inside, but you can fly with the, over them with a the drone. Uh, and actually, I own a company, um, pretty small. We have five employees. And this is the locations that we have been giving presentation last year. Um, from Vegas um, to Paris, uh, China, Paris, uh, Serbia, Austria. But this, this is the first time I am doing it in, in Germany. So uh, I'm still, I'm still uh, aiming at the CCC Congress sometime. And last year, if you're going to go Google, we did some great stuff with the mobile application. So you could actually inject yourself into running mobile application on Android and play the games and win and do some crazy stuff. So it's, it's on our GitHub if somebody wants to take a look. OK, so what we're going to talk today? Uh, we're going to talk about some hackers' problems, hacker solutions, about ELK stack, air crack, and visualization. And uh, I think most of the time, we will see the demo. So you're going to see what's actually possible to build in really short amount of uh, time and maybe some get crazy ideas for the end. So first, my question, who has been playing with Elasticsearch already? OK. Heavily or just scratching the surface? Scratching the surface. OK, great. So what's the problem with um, today? We're going to talk about the Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi. Um, is somebody penetration testing? Who's doing the penetration test? Or who's sniffing the Wi-Fi? OK, great. What's the, what's the problem? Do you have any problems when you're sniffing the Wi-Fi or doing the penetration test with Wi-Fi? Or not? Yeah, too much data. What do you run normally? Aircrack uh, NG tools? Then you have just terminal, OK, you can put out the JSON, and not the JSON XML or Kismet or XML. Um, but if you're sniffing a lot of, let's say, in a quite big time frame, then you get a lot of data, right? And you have to manually dig. So that's the, the problem. So we're going to go through how to get from that page. You now, this is, you know, what is this from error dump from this? to this. So we're going to be playing with your phones and your packets that your phones are sending at that moment. I've been collecting it now for, for the whole, almost all day at the aircraft of in Vienna, uh, aircraft in Frankfurt, uh, already here. So we can see if we can get some interesting data out of it. But before, what's actually there, the, there that we can do? Uh, um, there is one tool that can bring PCAP to XML from Vivek Ramachadran. He's famous on his uh, security tube uh, videos and um, other assignments. 
but he gets this kind. This is the best representation what, we, what he can get. So he's actually putting in SQL um, uh, SQLite database and just grabbing and uh, learning and getting the data out. So we were asking ourselves this year in the spring, can we do a little bit better? You know, it's, it's the same question that not only the hackers, but also ethical hackers and also the programmers and other um, type of people are asking. And we said, can we do it? Can we make it better? And, uh, and the result is, yes, we can do it. And with no line of code. Who's actually, who's doing the programming? Developer, are any developers here? Okay, would be that nice to get these great graphs and all the data without single line of code? Yes? Okay. Um, it's not totally true. Uh, you don't need to program the, the visualization, but we did some changes to the air crack, but I'm gonna cover that later. So actually, where did we start? So the first couple of things that when, when if we want to get into it, uh, what do we need? Hardware and software. So what kind of what's uh, on this hardware side? Definitely you know this one. If you're doing some kind of Wi-Fi, you have ALFs, alpha cards or some other. No? No? Yes. Why? Yeah, and they're quite strong, right? Although you should you should adjust the power of it because it's illegal to run over 100 milliwatts. I guess it's the same in Germany, it's the same in also in the European Union, but they can have one or even two watts. I think the last one. So actually, Wi-Fi card, I have it here. One of my cards is somewhere hidden in my backpack. I can bring it up later. Then you need a power. Why you need a power? to bring some uh, powerful computers to do the analysis, and big screen. You're going to see this later, why it's important to have a big screen, because otherwise you cannot visualize. Um, uh, two sessions before, I've been asking the guy what kind, of, um, what kind of hardware did he use when he has been analyzing the data from uh, trains here around said yeah well he has some cloud stuff but i found out also that you can buy really cheap hardware on uh, ebay you know this is a uh, twin quad core uh it's kind of old processor but it's okay with 60 gig 64 gigs of ram for 293 euros so it's kind of cheap if you want to run big calculation or big transformation of the data so software is the next part. Um, well, you need operating system, Linux, Mac, Windows, whatever you need. But you need to keep in mind that you might get some challenges, especially with one component, because it's not built for all kinds of systems. But we will talk about this also later. OK, and after that, when you have the operating system, so the hardware and the software, then actually, what do you need? It's two things. First is, is the environment, and the second thing is the data. Environment is Elk stack. So uh, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana for visualization. And you need some kind of data that you're going to be putting into this kind of Elk stack. So this is the basic, let's say, high, uh, high level architecture. You have the shippers or agents. Uh, this, these agents are kind of, it can be the PCs, it can be the virtual machines, it can even be the uh, Raspberry Pis. So you can have the Raspberry Pi with two alphas, so two wireless connections. Why has anybody tried to have Raspberry Pi with more than two cards? Any guess why? It's actually running out of power because the Raspberry Pi doesn't have enough power to power more than two alpha cards. Um, here are the agents. So here you're going to have the log ship, uh, the log stash forwarders. Here you have a log stash and elastic search. And here you have your GUI, so which will actually get the transformation data and show you in inside the web, inside your web browser. 
So uh, I don't want to go through all the steps because it's really nice written on that web page. Uh, it's on uh, DigitalOcean, how to install the Elasticsearch Logstash in Kibana. And it's really, really well written and you have the all steps that you need to get through. It's not that kind of complicated because if you're running a Ubuntu or something kind of similar system, uh, Linux distribution, it's, it's, it's pretty trivial. And if you just follow these steps, you're almost ready to go. So for the building the Elk stack, this, was, this is the perfect way. I know there are some other tutorials or uh, how to's how to build it, but it's not the case how to be gonna go through the steps, so. So first component, it's a lock stash. Actually, it's a component uh, for receiving processing and forwarding of locks. And it has different kind of uh, settings. So for input, so where are your locks coming from? Are they coming from uh, syslog? Are they coming from files? Uh, is this uh, connection encrypted? Then you have a filter where you do all the transformation of the data that it's coming inside, and then you have an output. Output in this case is going to be the elastic search. So this kind of co co uh, kind of configuration files, you have a file input. You can you can have a file. You can have a TCP listener. You can have uh, SQL, or you can have also uh, data coming from IRC or uh, Twitter or some other feeds. They have filter when you do something with your data, or maybe put it in a JSON if they are not uh, already there. And then you have the output, so you have the uh, where your data is going to be uh, going. Um, there are some other stuff uh, in Logstash configuration. There are already some kind of, uh, how should I say, templates for different type of the data. So for example, you can also have a, um, um, syslog automatically parsed or other uh, type of information that's getting inside. So and at the end, uh, see this kind of stuff, this is a representation how to change the IP number into the log stash. The other part of the log stash, uh, let's say family, it's log stash forwarder. Uh, you don't want to have the log stash installed on any machine. Uh, so on this agents, you just need a log stash forwarder. It's actually an agent. You, hand, you, can, you, you have already some pre-built images for some platforms. Uh, there are no log stash forwarder if you want to run it on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, but you can do it with some other solutions. Also, it's a problem uh, with Windows, with getting the Windows events. So, for example, if you want to have different type of logs, you can use the NG, NG, NX logs CE. Or for the Raspberry Pi, we have used the Beaver. It's actually the Python log forwarder. So it sends the logs to the central uh, log stash. Or you can do it just with the syslog. It can be also fine, but you need to tweak a little bit more the configuration. So the next component is Elasticsearch. So what kind of it's? It's not very clear. It's SQL, it's no SQL or something else. Well, actually, it's, we just say short, it's actually distributed search engine. It's not the how we are used to uh, SQL oriented, but it's more the documented. And uh, it has really good APIs. So over the port eight, mm, HTTP port uh, 92, 1,200, it's for the, uh, it really has good API uh, exposed. So if you ask kind of elastic search uh, for something, you get this kind of answer. So you get the documents with a score and uh, with the hints and also this uh, detail in a, in a JSON. Um, there are some other developments uh, with elastic search at the moment. Um, the problem with Elasticsearch is that they they made it, they created it, but they didn't think about the security. So they are fixing it now. Um, first of all, you have alerts that they are coming in the new versions, and the next thing is uh, the data shield. So actually, it's authentication for the for the Elasticsearch, uh, and some new stuff. It's also the packet beat. So you can actually 
go uh, on a network layer and that can go already parse some kind of network network packets there. Um, just one reminder, if you want to play with those, these two or three features, it's not free anymore. So they are not free. You can get free for 30 days, but afterwards you have to pay for the support. So uh, they kind of went in this way with their business model. So the third component, it's actually Kibana. And it takes this elastic search results and it gives you a graphical presentation. So this is actually what's sent from the browser to the Kibana, to the, to the elastic search uh, indexer, and then you get the back data. And from this, you get this in your browser. So you're going to see that this, do you ha does anybody has an idea what kind of this would mean in Wi-Fi networks? Any guess? Does it have meaning at all? What do you think? I promise you in 30 minutes, you're going to be able to read this. And you're going to be able to see, oh, that's my phone. You know, connecting to that Wi-Fi network. OK, as I mentioned, some issues that we ran into. There's lack of security, as I mentioned. So if you want to have authentication and you want to have the, all the, let's say, enterprise features, you have to pay. Uh, constantly, it's heavily uh, developed with Kibana and uh, version now 4. They have been a lot of changes. And they are lacking some kind of functionality still. You cannot do some kind of uh, really advanced uh, URL clicking. So if you want to click on something that is going to open in a new window or stuff like that. OK, so we have the environment. So we have the Elasticsearch. We have the log stash. So we can now ship the logs. But still, we said we need two things. One is environment. The other is data. So how do we get the data? Um, the best tool that you can find is still AirCrackNG. So Arrow uh, Dump is the best way to get the, 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 the data for free. You can have the um, PCAP. Uh, um, cards, they're going to cost around 700, 800 euros, and software around 3,000 euros if you want to have an uh, enterprise solution. But free, definitely Aircrack NG is the best one. The, the only problem that we uh, run into is that Aircrack doesn't spit out the JSON. Why would we need JSON? Because Elasticsearch and Logstash and everything, especially Elasticsearch, needs JSON if you want to do some stuff. Uh, we have been tested. We did test a lot of things. So to parse the output from Aircrack, it didn't go well. So we tried to parse the XML output. It didn't work also. So actually, we did go and change a little bit of the source code. Um, and uh, we introduced so the Aircrack NG can spit out the JSON output in a log file, the same as the XML or the other stuff. So we are still considering uh, if we're going to contribute to main branch because the our code at the moment is still, let's say, not well structured and it's a little bit hacked.
Okay. So this is the outcome from the error, error dump. Um, okay. So you have everything. You have the environment, you have the error dump, you have the data, and then it's time for the demo. So everything that you uh, put inside, so from the from the from the error dump here, you 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 get this blank uh, Kibana dashboard, and you have no idea what to look. You, know, you have the data. You see, this is the data actually coming live, also live coming now uh, in from the last from the last hour. So you see, so we get this data from the error dump that's running on my machine. So this is this is our actually original message, and we parse it and we get the all uh, all information in uh, in in a fields. So you see that last uh, last data was that's. Does somebody recognize this SSC ID? Yeah, it's the conference SSI ID. Um, actually, it's client connected to the uh, to here. So this is the data that we have. So, and I think in February we have been at this point. So we had the environment and we had the data, but afterwards, you know, it's like, <laughs> so now what? You know, you have a large amount of data, everything that you can gather. And this is gathered from this, you know. So if you go through a terminal window, this is what you see. You know, you see this uh, different access points. You see the clients; they are not associated. That's why they are picking out the, the sending out the probes. And you have the clients connected to the 67 well, somewhere here, so to this one. So you have the data, and what 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 then? Then we started to play with this data. So if you want to see, you know, it's really, it's really easy um, to see. Do you want to get a number how many users I can see from my antenna? So from my Wi-Fi at the moment, they're connected to the conference Wi-Fi. Do you think it's hard? So let's say um, we want to have a, a station Mac. So we want to have the station max so the addresses, and let's say we want to have the SEC ID. So for this one, uh, and actually we already uh, have the users, so we actually have the phones that are connected to, to this one. But the best part of this is that you can create a dashboard. So this is the data that's actually coming from 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 the Wi-Fi networks, and you see that these are the strongest with the strongest signal. So my card can can get it. Um, this is the, is the representation of the uh, encryption types of the Wi-Fi networks around us. So they have uh, majority of them. They have uh, they are open. This is the conference, and we see that we have around 10 SSC IDs, so, so Wi-Fi names. And 10 of Wi-Fi names, it has 27 physical access points. So because uh, um, the main Wi-Fi for the conference is actually hidden, it's using more than one uh, physical access point. And at the moment, for the last hour, I have been noticing that 112 phones, gadgets, notebooks, Packets has been flying around, around the air um, at that time. So you can also see the top clients connected to the SSID. This one, they are not connected to anywhere. So they are connected over the 3G, 4G, whatever, uh, using a cell provider. So majority are connected here. There are some users connected here. There are some users to other to other Wi-Fi. So we can also do analysis. What kind of the Access points are there. So Juniper, uh, uh, Juniper is here, Ubiquiti. So actually, this is kind of Edurome and the uh, conference Wi Fi's. And we can also see uh, the client types. So, majority of them, for the last hour, they're using kind of Intel Wi Fi or Intel or network connections, LG phones, and there's an Apple. So, if we change Let's say if we change this for the whole day, 
So for the Wi-Fi for the whole day, so the day so far, so all my collections from the from the wi uh, wireless airport in uh, in Vienna, uh, airport in Frankfurt, uh, you're gonna see that actually Apple is winning. So majority of the users that I I got with my antenna, so it's Apple is winning quite quite a lot against the other uh, quite against the other ones. So we can do the other interesting stuff. But let's say we're gonna see, just go for last uh, last four hours. Maybe you can get. Maybe I got your packets. Um, we also have some other um, some other stuff that's actually in there. So here are the probes that your phones have been sending out, beaconing out. So you see, this is the most. Um, these are the phones that sent most of the probes. So this phone sent 23 probes. So I know that he has 23 Wi-Fi connections stored in his phone. So uh, either ROM, so actually we can tell. Can, can, we, can we profile a little bit from, from this? So if he has connected to the edge ROM, so he must be a student or a teacher. Because otherwise you cannot get a Ethereum account, right? Um, okay, Camp 20, Freifunk, the Black Gate, Göttingen, Freifunk. Okay, we know that he's been to Göttingen at least once. Or he might live there. So there are some kind of, uh, I don't know, Germans, German, uh, but I guess these are the, 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 the Wi Fi that um, uh, he has been going or the. Uh, maybe the some coffee shops or some some other stuff. So also with with the other one, um, I had the client once when I was doing a presentation. I had one guy that actually he was sending more than hundred probes. So if you plot this Wi-Fi connection on the Google Maps, you can actually track where he moves. So uh, also with greater probability, you're gonna see. So you see also here the number of users connected to the Wi-Fi. So we can tell a little bit uh, how much attendee, how much people is actually at the conference this year. Okay, we can, we can little calculate that some of, them, some of the users, they are using one or two or maybe three devices, but uh, you can see the, the, the number of users actually connected to each, each Wi-Fi. You see this blue one is MRCV and this one is Ethereum and this green, uh, this green is actually users, they are not connected anywhere. So with this kind of uh, GUI, it's actually really also easy if you want to filter out. So we have here uh, the connections, so if we Let's say that I, I don't want to see the users, that they are not connected anywhere. So now I, oops, and I negate this. So, uh, so I only have the users that's actually connected to the, some kind of Wi-Fi networks. So, and this kind of data has been done without any line, without any line of code. So if we just return to the dashboard, um, let's go back. I promise you that I'm gonna explain this kind of this this pie chart. This pie chart here. Um, let's see it a little bit closer. Oh, it's a little too much. Let's say that we want to have only ten. 10 uh, top 10 top top domains 10 top uh, where is it now what did I do so you're gonna see that this one let's say for last hour it's gonna be a little faster and we hide the legend, so we're gonna have the biggest one. Would you guess which 
network is the official network for, for this conference? Any guess? Huh? Green, this one? Let's see if this one, if this one is. Now this is the raw, so actually this is, these are not connected anywhere. So it's, it's this one, because it has the most, most of the users. So we actually, what in this graph, we have SEC IDs of the networks, wireless networks. So if we have MRLCD 15, we have Fritzbox somewhere, somewhere around here, uh, ECB, uh, HDA, we have uh, Edurome. So these are the students that actually can use Edurome, VLAN, uh, some other stuff. So this is the first circle. So SSIDs. The next circle are physical access points. So as I said, you have SSID of uh, MRR CD 15, and this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Anyone from organizers here? No? Do they have around eight Wi-Fi? You can ask them later if they have around eight physical IDs, how, how can we um, see that they're, actually they have different kind of MAC addresses. So on this, we have clients. So you see on this one, so one client with this MAC address, so maybe a phone, maybe a tablet, maybe a PC, it's connected to this physical uh, Wi-Fi adapter, it's actually on this ECC ID. So this is our third. Third circle and the fourth circle. If we gonna get here, but let's say we can go also this. The fourth circle, it's if we take this one, so it's connected to RMR to this one MAC address to this Wi-Fi station. This is his MAC address, and we are seeing that he's using LG phone. What do you think, how hard is make this kind of a graph? How much time it's gonna take to do this kind of stuff? Any guess? Five hours, 10 hours, 100,000 lines of code, or 10 clicks? Huh? 15 clicks. Okay, you can you can count it. Okay, let's see. Let's make some visualization since the guy before he stole my uh, 30 minutes. So let's do the pie chart from a new search. So we're gonna just go for the Wi-Fi, and here we're gonna see that we're gonna go for unique count. So unique count. This means that we're gonna count unique uh, data of your mobile phones in a database. So, and we're gonna sort this. So we're gonna take out the station Mac raw. So we're gonna have all your phones. So, so no duplicates of the phones is gonna be inside. So this is the first step. So we take this and then we start to slice, slice this uh, circle a little bit around. So we take the term. So uh, we're gonna go for ESID. ESID is name of the Wi-Fi network. So Let's say we're gonna go with five or 10 uh, networks. And if we apply, we're gonna see that actually we got the uh, ASSIDs. And you see with size, size of this pie chart, you can also have the numbers that are actually connected. So a majority of the phones or devices, they, they were not connected to any Wi-Fi networks. The second one, the, the, this is the official, Conference Wi-Fi network, and the third one should be Edurome, uh, if I'm right. Yes, Edurome and some other Wi-Fi networks. So we have now sorted SSIDs. Then we're gonna split this uh, with some other aggregation. So we're gonna also split the sizes, and this we want to have MAC addresses of this uh, of these success points. So now we're gonna go to the BSS IDs, and let's say that one. Uh, Named Wi-Fi network, it shouldn't have more than test, more than, more than, uh, more than ten, uh, let's say, physical Wi-Fi networks. So you see that here we have uh, official 
conference Wi-Fi and one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of the devices uh, in last in last hour. So then we're gonna go a little bit further and we're gonna sl slice again. So with the terms. So now we want to have the actual mobile phones or tablets or PCs or notebooks. They are connected to this, and we say let's say again about ten. Let's say top ten. You see, and here in the thir third row. Around the circle, we actually have the MAC addresses of the phone, and additional additional stuff that we have for this one, we can also see what kind of manufacturer. So if they have Windows Phone, if they have uh, uh, Apple, uh, have it, and we have one, two, three, four rows. Who was counting the clicks? Fifteen or ten? Something like that, right? And you already have this. So you have the Wi-Fi networks, you have the MAC addresses, you have the phones, they are connected, and you have the manufacturers of the phones. So you can see really quick, you just plug in your, your, your Wi-Fi network card, and as soon you get this, this, kind, of, uh, this kind of representation. Um, so there are some other stuff that you can be uh, looking into. So we saw this one. So clients, they're connected. How many clients? And this is kind of stream that's actually going inside. So you see what's actually the, 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 the clients are sending. So this is for access points. See, this is access point that has opened. It's, channel, it's on channel 6. And uh, this is kind of power that we are getting and the uh, manufacture of the device. So for every access point, you have this one, and also uh, also other access points that are visible from 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 this location. <laughs> so see Fritzbox. I guess this is somewhere outside. See Ethereum. They are using the Juniper networks, and here below there are clients. So you see the clients are beaconing out, uh, beaconing out the Wi-Fi the Wi-Fi networks. See this one is one plus phone that's actually sending out uh, his uh, Wi-Fi uh, stored Wi-Fi addresses. Um, I have idea to connect this one. So this kind of data they are getting so to plot the, on a Google map. So the location of that Wi-Fi that they have been visiting, that would be really interesting. But as I said, at the moment, you cannot do this with Kibana, but um, things are moving. So it might be that Somewhere in the near future, this also could be uh, this also could be possible. See, sometimes there are quite interesting uh, SSIDs. You can find it here. So this is Edurom hotspots, uh, Mines Camp 2015. Was that ca CCC Camp? So I know that that guy. I, I don't know him. But I know he has been to the CCC camp this year, right? And uh, let's see if we can see with one click. So this one, what kind of phone, phone is he using? Let's say that this filter, I don't need it, but I want to have his MAC address. So filtered, so he's, he's using Motorola. So I don't know his name, but I know where he's moving. And he has been to a CC camp, and he uses Motorola. Could we locate that guy? Could we find him? Huh? Oh, he he. he. Downstairs? Yeah, it might be because it's getting it's uh, it's getting out. So, um, we have been also trying to play with the uh, with the with the with the movement. So because. Uh, with a dashboard, you can see uh, also the power of the clients they're sending. So we have been trying, but uh, at the moment still not, uh, it's still not working. So you can actually see that when the clients were moving inside the, inside the building. So because the power of, uh, power of the signal they're sending their phones or sending to the, um, to the access point, uh, it can be determined that they're moving away from you, they are coming closer, this kind of, uh, this kind of stuff. Um, okay. 
Uh, with this one, you can do a lot, lot of more stuff. You know, I was just showing you just some, uh, uh, let's say, uh, things that we managed to get in a couple of months. But I guess there are some creative uh, guys that could be using it or abusing this kind of the data visualization um, to get, let's say, uh, to attract people or even even more. Um, okay, um, during this uh, our research, we run into some kind of problems. The first problem is Java. So if you're using Java, then you must be ready to use some kind of a uh, lot of lot of RAM. So this this is all the results that uh, you see at the moment. You know, this is the my Java virtual machine. It has like 3.6 gig of RAM. Now, if I start doing something with uh, with the GUI, uh, let's say a refresh, you're gonna see that. Uh, both of the processors are going to go up, but now I, I have pretty low subset just for the last hours of date, last hours of data. If I would go for one day, uh, this would uh, jump a little bit, even a little bit more. So if I go from uh, the day so far, so all the data, uh, all the data from today, you see that all the processors were 100%. So the the Java might be a problem, so uh, be aware of that. Um, also, where you know firing up or collecting this data, where would be interesting? Definitely, this kind of security conference. It's a good way. Or airport today, when I was waiting for my bus uh, to get me here uh, at the terminal one, you know, a lot of people were moving by me. You know, and a lot of their packets were moving by me, or my wireless capture card, my wireless card um, captured them. Um, there are some crazy ideas, also um, not only for the good guys, but also maybe for the bad guys or even law enforcement stuff, um, because there are a lot of possibilities that you can do. You know, just with the clicks. If you have once, you have the data inside, there are only clicks of the uh, filters or visualization of the data representation um, uh, <clears throat> away. Um, there's no programming for the GUI. Sometimes it's good one, sometimes it's bad one, this option. And as I said, you can also do the person identification. I was giving presentation uh, in, to students in June and his phone was beaconing out, sending the probes. And actually, in some, one of the probes, uh, it was some phone number. You know, if you want to use the internet, call this number. You know, it was, and I called his number, and his phone ring. You know, so actually, with one packet, we could find the person. But also can be used as a Wi-Fi IDS. So if you're monitoring your enterprise or your school or your home network, uh, you can see if you know that in-house you have like five wireless devices connected. And if some sixth device is connected uh, uh, to your Wi-Fi, you know that something might be strange. So it could be also used as a simple Wi-Fi uh, intrusion detection. Uh, it can be used as a both sides, so as a hackers. You know, when we go on a mission, you know, sometimes uh, since I'm driving a black car, you know, normally I put big antennas on my car if we're gonna drive to, I don't know, company or target that we are targeting. Um, it's really strange if you see three or four hackers in a car. You know, it's just like with open notebooks. You know, it's just like <laughs> slamming. So. Uh, the, the approach that we are taking now, we just bring one laptop with four uh, wireless network cards. Why do you think four or even more? Because what is doing my... That wasn't me. Okay. Uh, what, is, what is actually my... Uh, see, 
since I have now one cart, what's that's actually my Wi-Fi cart not doing at the moment? It's hopping the channels. So I'm on the channel 10, now I'm channel 5, so I cannot get the, all the packets. If I have three cards, I can set it on channel 1, 3, 7, and 11, and I can cover almost whole spectrum of the Wi-Fi with the packets. So with the 4, I can get almost 99% of, of the packets, uh, if you're doing this. Um, so this is also for the red team, so for the uh, for the uh, attackers. But also blue team, if you set up kind of Wi-Fi uh, in your net in your home network or in your company network or at the faculty, you get a real quick uh, view of what's actually happening in, uh, in Wi-Fi spectrum. This is I mentioned already. It can be used also as a Wi-Fi IDS. And it can be also used as a stocking. You know? So if you know where people are you know, from this kind of uh, beaking uh, out the networks, if I know that where you are eating, where you are living, you know, what's your normal movement, uh, where you spent, I don't know, Friday's evening eating, I can be there if I'm an attacker or a stalker or something like that. So it can be used also um, in this kind of scenario. Okay, we reached the end, so I know it's late. Any questions, maybe? I know it's a fast one, but I don't want to steal any more time. You're the next one? No? They're waiting outside, okay. Okay, are there any questions? Uh, there are not, at the moment there is no blog post, it's gonna be a blog post on our webpage, how to bring this all thing together. But uh, we are gladly to share if somebody asks how did we do it or even mail the source code for error dump, we will happily do, we will happily mail it. So any questions, maybe? At least one, so I can go back to Slovenia. You know, I got one question, yes. No. Uh, for this one, it's uh, almost normal that it's supported on Linux or whatever. Because uh, the problems are, it, uh, s you need special kind of card if you want to inject the, inject the packets. Here we are not doing anything. We are not injecting, we are not doing just, we are just uh, putting the card into monitoring mode and then bringing out the packets, what's actually flowing there. But it might be interesting if you have the other card and uh, drop all the users from the Wi-Fi because then you get the more packets from the probes, so you can be even more effective. So you can do start the authenticating the users on the Wi-Fi. Actually on this one, you know, just because you send only one packet and after the Wi-Fi specification needs to be, connection needs to be dropped and sent again, it can, it can be reconnected. So you can just go and drop all and then hope, and I, I hadn't planned to do this, but uh, uh, when I was practicing, uh, it, wasn't enough time to do that, but you can play this on your own. You just the authenticate, send all the packets. There are scripts on GitHub. You know, just start the script in Python. It said, okay, I'd, I want to the authenticate all users on this Wi-Fi, and it drops all the users. And then when the phone is gonna start a beginning out, and when until the, he finds the um, his Wi-Fi network that he can connect, then he, you have even more. But since this is invasive, I didn't. You know, it's a different, you know, it's, it's not Slovenia, so <laughs> I want to go home tomorrow, you know, so I didn't do this. But it, in a real case, when we are attacking the company with a contract, we are also doing this because it can get even more data. And uh, especially it's the same thing uh, if you want to uh, grab the VPA handshake for the, uh, for, for, for brute forcing, uh, VPA passwords. Uh, then you need to do the same. Or wait, the client reconnects again, then you still uh, we pay and check. Yes. You can get the beacon. Uh, <laughs> 
Oh, it depends, but it also depends of type of the phone, type of the Android, because some of them they're beaconing more, some of them are beaconing less. So it 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 depends. Um, with this one, maybe I uh, maybe I can show you with the open network. With an open network, you don't get. Uh, you see. Uh, with an open networks, you don't get uh, only MAC addresses, but you can get also their IP addresses as well in uh, frames. So you can have the even more information. So you can have their IP addresses, who is connected to there. So you can do the scanning there. But uh, you don't have IP addresses if you're on a, a VPA or VPA2 protected networks. These IP addresses are only on open networks. So you get this additional information. So it could be a little bit, you, had, you have one information more. For, that's why open networks are, um, uh, are more, uh, more fun. Any other question? What? Oh uh, yes, you could do this. Yeah, well, with the with the power, but it's about three antennas. But it's a little bit. It's we get this kind of request, but also, but where is Salam? So it's it's yeah. You need very very quick, especially if he moves. Uh, and there are some tricks, but uh, it's it's not that easy. You know, it's just like this. But in this case, if you're just listening, nobody knows that you are there. Oh, you just put in a monitoring mode. Nobody knows that you're doing some Wi-Fi scanning. Oh. And these logs uh, can get can get really uh, let's see can get really huge. So yes, yes, I know. No, it's we almost finished. I started also at 8:30. So. Okay, so you see this uh, for the last hour or for the last two hours, it's like 100 and no, uh, this one is 37 max for one hour locks. Uh, filling into the Elasticsearch and Elasticsearch has several million of uh, documents there. So, but you can you can tune it. So, um, and the other one way is also if you have the Raspberry Pi with the UMTS modem, or with a notebook, you just bring these sensors or somewhere out, and you can have your, the results in your data center. So you don't have to be actually there. You just send somebody. He's just walking through the center or university or airport, and you get the data in your data, and you can analyze it from your office. So it's it's really nice, especially if you're sending over the uh, over the open VPN with uh, uh, with uh, compression. You can you can really uh, bring down the volume of the data that they're sent to the center. Okay, some other question. If not, I thank you very much for staying to me, with me until 9:30, and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe maybe one thing. I saw that actually on the web page of the conference at at the presentation title. It's actually a feedback form. If somebody wants to have uh, fill it out, I would be really grateful so I can do it better next time. So thanks. <laughs>